This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcast, As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. Hi, my name is Travis McVeigh. I'm an anesthesiologist from Dallas, Texas. I host a podcast called Thank You Notes at Ars Longa Media. Showing gratitude to people just makes me feel good, and I want to share the practice of thank you notes with everybody who listens. I write thank you notes to people and then bring them on the show to read it to them. Past guests have included my high school teachers, my friends, other physicians, and a couple of internet celebrities. I will also be doing episodes that explore the science behind gratitude practices to demonstrate to everybody the actual tangible benefits of practicing gratitude. Listen everywhere you get podcasts and check out the extras on my social media accounts. Thank you for listening. Could this be the day I have waited for? When all my hard work doesn't go ignore. Maybe she was right. They will realize I can change the world. Open up their eyes. They know I am bored. They say me to blood. My soul marriage bones. I believe in love. I just want to prove by the service gift. I will change this world. Baby, this is Welcome to the Inside the Boards podcast, the podcast dedicated to helping you learn to think like a question writer so you can study smarter, not harder, and succeed in medical school. And now here's your host, Patrick Beeman. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible. You can get a free copy of Adelaide Adesina's How to Prepare for the Medical Boards with your free Audible trial, just head to insidetheboards.com slash audible for details. Adelaide Adesina is the author of How to Prepare for the Medical Boards and the founder of Smash USMLE, as well as a MedEd YouTube sensation. His FTP lectures have had over 7 million views. In part one of our interview with him, he offers some advice on how to approach board exams, whether it's the Comlex, USMLE, or a shelf exam. And in part two, dives a little bit deeper into the Smash USMLE platform. In conjunction with this interview, Adelaide has offered listeners a one-month free trial of their Step 1 QBank, so you can head over to Inside the Boards slash episode 022 for details to grab the link and your free trial of the Smash USMLE program. This is part two of our interview with Dr. Adelaide Adesina from Smash USMLE. In this episode, he discusses a little bit more about the platform that he created to help students prepare for step one, step two of the USMLE and level one and two of the Comlex, as well as the video lectures that have proved to be a wild success on YouTube. I'm going to be taking probably two weeks between this episode and another one. Just a fair warning to you guys. In the meantime, please check out our previous episodes and tell your friends about the podcast, especially the step one review series We're going to be launching around the beginning of March. And in the next episode, I will give you a few more details about this. What led you then to start doing your own thing to help others prepare for the boards? So this is our story about Smash USMLE. I was a second year medical student. I remember we were having like a small group session with my friends and we're studying. And I noticed like everybody was trying to explain the concept, but we couldn't connect the dots together. Like we learned physiology and then we learned, you know, biochemistry and then we learned anatomy. And I, we couldn't put it all together. And I said, you know, this, this, you know, the human body is just one body. And I know the way we learn things in medical schools and now they change the curriculum to a little more integrated format. But back in my days, you know, the new one of the subjects and nobody put it together. And it was very frustrating for me. So I was in my apartment one day and I think I remember it was sepsis. And, you know, I'm learning about sepsis and I realized that I learned about acute inflammation in pathology. 
And they're talking about how, you know, there's margination, there's this, uh, you know, leukocytosis whereby the neutrophils are basically rolling and attaching to these adhesion molecules. And I said, okay, so what's the whole point of that? And I learned, okay, well, there's some, you know, vasodilation, histamine release, and that's these interleukins, and there's fluid leaking out of the interstitial space. And then we learned in micro, I remember back then we learned about E. coli, it's got its endotoxin. And I said, wait a minute. Oh, so what you're trying to tell me is the micro component of sepsis combining it with the pathologic component. And also we had learned about obviously the capillary leakage, hydrostatic pressures and physiology, right? So I'm putting it together one piece at a time. I say, okay, I learned about hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure in physiology. We learn about acute inflammation in pathology, how this, you know, uh, neutrophils migrate to go to, into the tissues to attack the bacteria. But then we learn about endotoxin, like the lipid, you know, lipid A, out of you know, you know, the gram, we learn about the cell walls just in micro. So I said, okay, and then they talk about endotoxin and shock. So by the time I could flip it over and got the pathophysiology of the disease, I said, wait a minute. So you are telling me basically a patient that has a simple pneumonia or urinary tract infection, has E. coli, for example, in the bladder, they got a cystitis, right? You know, they got an acute inflammatory process going on. They develop pyelonephritis in the process. Now we learned an anatomical portion of it in the beginning of anatomy where we learn about the bladder, you know, the ureters and the, you know, the renal arteries. And you're telling me if this bacteria walks away through the ureters, cause an infection in the kidney, can diffuse easily into the renal artery. Now we got a systemic vasodilation, we got sepsis, we got a bacteria inside the bloodstream. This cascade of immunologic process happens where you have all these neutrophils coming in, sending all their, you know, uh, the oxygen myeloperoxidase pathway that Goya was talking about. And I said, oh, so that's how that works, using the oxygen myeloperoxidase pathway, meaning that Wow, that is how they attack in the bacteria. The process of destroying those bacteria causes a ma massive systemic inflammatory response syndrome, and that we eventually lead to sepsis when you have a source of infection, just made sense. And I said, really? That was the whole point of that? Somebody that told me that at the beginning. Yeah, so, why don't they teach it that way? Exactly. So I was kind of, that, that was my eureka moment, because I literally had to go and pull out my immunology book my patho book, my anatomy book, and put it up into one stack. And I said, why don't we tell the story from the end and bring it back to the beginning? And you can now understand the main reason. It's kind of like, why are we learning this? So that was the driving force. And I said, well, if I can understand just, just this sepsis, can I apply that to every single subject? And that's how Smash USML was born. Actually, the future teaching position was born. I started my first video on YouTube about six years ago, and it was on the portal, on portal hypertension. And, you know, I talked about the atomic component of it, and, it went on, and eventually finished the entire lecture series, and people really loved it. The students like, we love the way you put it together. It's almost like, if I was a fifth grader, I can understand this. But... It's because in medical schools, every professor has a PhD or an MD, and they're teaching what they specialize in. So once they walk out of the classroom, you, it's up to you to put it together. Uh, so that's how we started the company, and that's how I started making these videos. And in the last six years, we've hit about 7.3 million views on YouTube uh, just from the success of this medical education videos. And students really enjoyed it, and they asked for more. And that's when we started our own question bank company. We started our own videos because, you know, I literally had to go through the entire textbook. I'm talking about multiple different books to explain one disease process. And students finally made sense out of it. And they spend less time studying in class rather than spending three hours reading a 300 slide PowerPoint. In 30 minutes, everything can be explained in 30 minutes or less. Uh, and that's how Smash Resemblance has been different from every other review program out there. Are your lectures still available on YouTube? Yes, we have actually about uh, over 100 videos plus on YouTube mixed with some, you know, advice. Also, the student will ask for advice, so both clinical and non-clinical content, yes. Are the videos that, that are on the Smash USMLE platform of a different uh, quality or... Do they have more kind of content in them compared to what's on YouTube? 
Yes and no. So the quality is definitely better. You know, they're much even higher definition. Also, some of the videos on YouTube are not completed. So you might only get maybe like the first 25 minutes and the other 15 minutes might not be on YouTube. So you have to come on the website to actually watch the whole video. For example, you might learn hyperkalemia and all the causes of hyperkalemia. But when it comes to disease management and treatment, you have to watch the rest of the video on smashusmm.com. Okay, that makes sense. So there's a lot of free content on on there that you guys are offering. And apparently people are consuming with over 7 million views. But then you also have uh, the premium content on smashusmle.com, along with a Q bank, right? Uh, yes. For both step one and step two, correct? Correct. How many questions are in each of those Q banks? There's about 2,300 questions for our step one Q bank. And for our step two Q bank, there's 1,900 questions. This is always the question that I always get the same response to, but who should use Smash USMLE? Everyone can use Smash USMLE if you're... <laughs> yeah, if that's, you're what <laughs> that's what we always get, but, but really drill down for us. Who, what type of students has found the most success in their education using your content and your products? That's a good question. So I get calls from all over the country uh, regarding our product, and um, I've had people who are... You know, older students who feel like they're struggling in class to learn the material because of the way they've been presented and they have difficulty grasping the content just because, I mean, think about it. You're a second year medical student. The first time you're hearing the word acute myelogenous leukemia, you've never heard that word in your life. And then you have to master the content behind it. So just understanding the terminology is already frustrating. Students that have trouble really mastering content in medical school really benefit a lot from our program. If also, you know, students that are a little bit weaker in some subjects that they are struggling with, they really, uh, they find it very, very helpful for them to be able to understand it. Uh, also, students that have trouble reading textbooks. So, like, everybody reads textbooks, right? But not everybody understands what they're reading. And that's what we found out, that, you know, the people writing the textbooks are PhD knowledge, right? MD, PhD knowledge. And they write a certain level of, uh, of mastery. But when you have a, a newbie who's reading your textbook, you have to come down to their level. And, you know, being a first or second year medical student, you're not there yet. You don't have that clinical knowledge content. So our videos really help simplify for those people who are constantly highlighting all the entire textbook from cover to cover, and they don't retain anything. Um, also, students that love mnemonics and... Uh, that visual learners, that they can, they, when they watch how things are being hand-drawn on the board, it lets the memory stick. Uh, they are some of the students that really benefit a lot uh, from our program also. Uh, even the strong students that you know, are already good at what they do, and they just want to find a better way of learning what they already know, uh, and a more in-depth knowledge, also do benefit. Sure. So when I give advice to people, when they ask, what question bank should I use? I've worked with three question banks over the years and was even the director of, of content for one of them for about four years. And still, my my response would be a little bit nuanced because there's a reason that UWorld has something like 90% of the market share for a question bank. It's because what they do is is done extremely well. So I think USMLE World should be a part of a lot of people's preparation for their board exams. But USMLE World doesn't have as much questions, I think, as people need to cover content both for their board exams as well as during their classwork as first and second years say. And this is one thing that I wish I had done when I was preparing for step one, that I could have used a question bank to prepare and study for my microbiology and immunology or my, you know, cardiology section of our organ systems block, um, et cetera, et cetera. So let me ask you this. If, if you have to give a lecture nowadays, you still use a whiteboard or do you use PowerPoint or something like that? No, I still use a whiteboard. Have you ever had to do a PowerPoint? <laughs> I've had to do one and it was it's very terrible, boring. right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I much prefer a lecture uh, style that uh, is a little more primitive, but um, I also think it forces you to kind of really pay attention and learn as well. And maybe that's why so many people have, have gone and viewed your lectures. 
of all the lectures you've done, um, which one are you most proud of? What is the one that you're just like, man, I killed it on that one. Like, that's my favorite one to give. That's the one that people really like. My favorite lecture is actually my heart sound video. Okay, we'll link to that in the show notes. So, Well, it was kind of the most practical in terms of as a, uh, as a physician or a medical student or medical professional because I remember when I was a second year and we had an OSCE lab yeah. where we had to go listen to heart sound. And I remember my professor used to play these little things and we had to listen and discern uh, what we were listening to. And I found out it was really hard for people to understand what they're listening to. It, it's really difficult to, to pick out, is this mitral stenosis or you know, mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation or aortic stenosis? And obviously it comes with practice. So, but, so I made this video during my cardiology rotation. Coming off the rotation, I literally made the video, uh, talked about just the basics. You know, a lot of people want to know all this fancy exotic you know, a heart sounds, an ASD, you know, like a fixed split sound. And, you know, but what about knowing what an S1 and an S2 just sounds like, you know? Uh, and maybe at S3 and 4, you know, just the basic of that. So I made that video. It's getting close to a million views right now on YouTube. Um, and it's one of the top videos. And I'm very proud of it because I, I show people how to just, just listen to the basic heart sound, know what normals, and just using your stethoscope without anything fancy so and your fingers that, that that was fun i'll have to check that one out it's been a while since i thought about heart sounds i mean now if it's <laughs> yeah, just don't be yeah exactly now if i <laughs> if it doesn't sound like lub dub lub dub then i'm like oh they, they call cardiology yeah call cardiology <laughs> for a uh, complete workup spare no expense <laughs> all right well i know uh, you have to go shortly here but thank you for your time oh thank you so much for having me to uh patrick it's been a pleasure so definitely i would love to come back and we can have this session again and give something good to the students to learn and know what's inside the board i like it thank you music for this episode is from forgive durden's razia's shadow the tune is Life is Looking Up. As I mentioned before, if you have artists that you like, please send us your suggestions to info at insidetheboards.com and I will see about featuring your favorite bands or artists on the show as bump music. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting our sponsors. Inside the Boards is in no way affiliated with the United States Medical Licensing Examination, Comprehensive Osteopathic Medical License Examination, National Board of Medical Examiners, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, National Board of Osteopathic Medical Examiners, or any other licensing or examination body. All exam names and other trademarks are the property of the respective trademark owners. Content discussed during the program is the property of Inside the Boards, or the attributed trademark owner and may not be reproduced without permission from the appropriate entity. Inside the Boards fully adheres to the respective policies on irregular behavior outlined by the aforementioned credentialing bodies.